Welcome back everyone to another Commander Conquer 3 Games Wrath video commentary. I'm Green Zero and we have the 10 greatest games of the year for 2012 as decided by the Games Wrath community. That's right, the 10 greatest games of the year. They are coming right up in just a moment. A special thanks to the community must be mentioned as this year's video would not have been possible without the overwhelming popular demand for the series to make a comeback. So here it is, stay tuned, grab yourself a drink because it's going to be a long one. Here come the 10 greatest replays of the year coming right up. So here we are with the first replay on the list. Replay number 10 sees Kimisabi playing as the Cyan GDI against Durr as the Purple GDI on Tournament Rift. Kimisabi's got aggression on his mind as he goes straight for the center field, but Durr's got other ideas, pushing some tanks right down the guts to pressure Kimisabi, all the while taking the bottom spikes and grabbing the blue Tiberium for himself. Chaos quickly ensures as both sides prodded each other in the center field before a major engagement breaks out near the eastern spike as Durr finds himself heavily outnumbered. Luckily for Durr, he gets a nice flank off and gets behind the enemy Predator tanks and somehow manages to crush the superior force with just enough left over to pressure the center expansion, but Kimo holds fast. Kimo's also got the southwest field in his sights, but Durr rolls his Conyard in and brings rocket troopers to back it up, pulling in the armory reinforcements, but a tower spam quickly ensures as Harvester's getting in on the action as well. Durr manages to take the field, but unfortunately for him, Hammerheads are wreaking havoc in his base, while Kimasabi hits the backside of the blue expansion, causing some extra pain for Durr, but he doesn't care as he hits Kimo's middle field with his Marv and turns around and destroys Kimo's Marv as well in the process, taking it down. Kimo once again takes to the skies and goes for his Orca Harassment, which he has been doing all game, causing massive pain to the harvesters and the economy of Durr. And a second Marv from Kimosabi forces Durr to sell up all his important infrastructure, while his own Marv gets amped by a mass imp spam, and despite having some nice sniper placement, his Marv goes down and he's unable to regain his footing in the game, going down to Kimosabi in an epic game. Next up we go replay number 9 on the list, which features Excess Illusion playing as the Scrim Faction, against everyone's favorite Dig Dackle. Yes, one of the pros is back again to play as the GDI faction. And he's got some sneaky tactics in mind, quickly grabbing a refinery and following it up with Pitbull on APC pressure on the early expansion. Illusion manages to hold it off using his tier three base defenses as well as Mechapedes, but unfortunately he can't do anything about the now eight Orcas raiding his field, destroying all his economy. Dackle now has the upper hand, but it doesn't stop Illusion from pushing forward with an attack using Stormrise, Gun Orcas, and Mechapedes to pressure. Dackle's newly found expansion, preventing him from mining any Tiberian. But Dackle turns it around, pushing back the screen forces and following up with another account attack in the south, forcing Illusion to sell up all of his base. However, Dackle overcommits in the main and loses the majority of his forces to the defending screen units, but continues harassment pressure in the top north with Pipples, and he quickly follows it up with some air harassment as well, using zone troopers in Hammerheads, a strong combo. Storm Riders, though, however, quickly unhinge that plan. Dackle decides to go for some Firehawk support though and quickly ends the Storm Rider threat while his base remains under siege from Tripod support. He quickly turns it around though using captured Tripods but it's pretty hard to kill those phase ones. So Dackle opts to go for Harvesters again instead and he does not even care there's Storm Rider support there which turn around and destroy the remaining Harvesters from Dackle and with only a handful of units each and a clutch EMP blast it just isn't quite enough for Illusion to save his drone platform that's destroyed by the Pitbulls, knocking Illusion completely out of the game and forcing him to surrender in a very technical fight. Let's take a look at game number 8 now, which sees Bike Rush Owns playing as the Red Black Hand against everybody's favourite Unleashed UA playing as the GDI forces. Bike Rush quickly goes for the spikes, being Black Hand he's more than up to the task of taking those ones while Unleashed goes for an aggressive expansion. And AP ammo APCs are on the cards as Bike Rush desperately tries to hold back the early aggression from Unleashed with his man spam, but despite the damage being caused, Unleashed just can't break into Bike Rush's base. Bike Rush quickly resorts to sneaky flame tank attacks as they roll into Unleashed's main base, and it's not the only one also following up his expansion and knocking down all of Unleashed's production. Oh no, that's going to slow him down a ton. Unleashed is feeling the heat from the flame tanks but manages to turn around and put in a great counter attack on Bike Rush's main, crushing his way through. But unfortunately the tip core bikes are out in force and they blunt that attack and quickly follow through with a counter attack with the Redeemer, smashing all the hammerhead support, leaving Unleashed in seriously deep trouble as the flame Redeemer continues to clean up the remainder of the base. Unleashed quickly retreats and saves a majority of his units, setting up in his southeastern base, allowing him time to tech up and push back on the now heavily destroyed Center Tiberian field with his hammerheads and a mar, but Bike Rush holds it back, despite taking serious losses from the hammerheads. Unleashed quickly returns with the second mar, but unfortunately for him, Bike Rush has managed to fortify himself quite well, pushing out a lot of infantry to defend out the mar, quickly EMPing it and destroying it. Nice work. 
Spycrush then finds Unleashed second hidden base in the southwest and tries to destroy it, but with no flame on the Redeemer, that's going to be pretty hard. And it powers Unleashed for another attack on the center field. But once again, it's lights out for Unleashed as the Ent Buggies come in and disable his Marv again. And the final engagement goes terribly bad for Unleashed, giving Bycrush a nice victory despite Unleashed's final attempts to set up one more base, but it's just not enough. For replay number 7 on the list, we head back over to Decision, which sees Unleashed UA once again playing as the GDR forces, but this time against Daddy Man playing as Steel Talons. Go Steel Talons! Unleashed quickly grabs a tower for some nice early defense while following up with an Orca attack, destroying several harvesters in the process. He also uses the distraction to quickly expand to the north and continues the Orca harassment, pushing in several more relentless attacks as he continues to take out pitbulls and harvesters alike. The airstrikes against the heavy harvesters are relentless, but Daggy Man manages to catch them napping on the deck, destroying most of them. But Unleashed's focus has returned to the ground as Pitbull's roll in destroying more harvesters as Daggy Man cannot stop the pressure. Unleashed also uses a second conyard to expand to the southeast. As Double Sonics and Amarv roll around, but they meet Daggy Man's heavily armored forces with Behemoths and Amarv, and Unleashed finds himself outgunned and outnumbered despite causing some serious damage to their numbers. And with the enemy Marv destroyed, Daggy Man rolls in with his superior armor forces as Unleashed's base is quickly destroyed and a nice money shot of the Orcas causes them to destroy a majority of his forces as the unstoppable armored force continues through to Unleashed Spain. As he's forced to rely on his air support as the only means of holding back the deadly armada from Daggy Man. And like a swarm of angry hornets, they slowly wear down Daggy Man's force, striking from every single direction and causing mass pain to Daggy Man's slow moving forces. However, it doesn't stop him from ranking up a heroic Mar, but that doesn't last long, quickly going down in Unleashed Main, and the second Mar is quickly dispatched as Unleashed heads back to the skies. Daggy Man simply has no answer to the air superiority of Unleashed as he pushes forwards and takes out harvesters and even is game enough to take on the enemy pitbulls. And to make matters worse, Unleashed scores a nice heroic star orca in the process, causing mass pain. And with a final Mar being dispatched by the end blast, mass infantry and mass orca, that's GG for Daggy Man, giving Unleashed a nice victory. Tournament Dust Bowl makes its first appearance with replay number 6 on the list which features Spectre playing as the Deadly Trailer 59 against Durr once again this time playing as the Nod Faction and both sides are out for blood as the Travel Player quickly grabs himself a spike while Durr goes for a double War Factory spam but Spec sees it coming with his Buzzer Scouts and quickly rushes for a fast tech to answer the mass bike buggy spam with an army of Mechapedes, nice work there and the Mechas quickly defend out all the attacks from Durr routing every engagement. Specs mecha attacks then turn around and hit Durr's expansion field with a nice temporal wormhole to slow down the harvesters. But Durr keeps trying for sneak attacks, but he can't kill those phased harvesters, so he pushes on the newly found expansion from Spectre. Spectre's under siege from heavy infantry attacks and Venoms, but manages to hold fast and turn things around, wiping out most of the man spam and destroying the Venoms in the process. But Durr turns it around and gets a sneaky flame tank to snipe down Spec's tech, and then he punishes Spectre with a brutal Tib Vein for camping his final expansion base. And feeling the rage, Spectre quickly turns around and slams Durr's attempt at a counterattack, destroying the Redeem with a nicely placed wormhole and EMP tripods. And the game goes into overdrive as massive engagements break out in the southeast as Durr desperately attempts to hold the line with Venoms, Obelisks and Avatars. Nice work there. And quickly destroys Spectre's tripod, forcing him to retreat, chasing down most of the infantry in the process. Spec is in phase and quickly takes to the skies with his planetary assault carriers, but a nicely placed rage gen from Durr forces the planetary assault carriers to destroy Spec's own hexapod and the Venoms attempt to snipe down any planetary assault carrier that wanders too far from the pack as the engagement in the north really heats up. Yet neither side invests in any artillery units and they're both forced into frontal engagements again and again, Durr eventually being chased away by the heavy forces of Spec as he pushes forward on Durr's last remaining base. And he fights valiantly, but Spectre's got a never-ending line of reinforcements as the lasers desperately try to snipe down all the Spectre's units, but it's just not enough. And with captured avatars, Spec pushes forward and the Redeemer all alone forces Durr to GG. Okay, reaching the halfway point now, we have replay number 5 on the list, which sticks with Dust Bowl as we see Steve Nash playing as the Black Hand against Bike Rush Owens playing as the GDI. And Nashington gets things moving with an early flame tank, but Bike Rush sees it coming and he also notices the double trouble with the Reckoner on the way as well. Nashington scores the spikes with his flame tanks, but he cakes the entrance, losing his flame tank to the pitfalls. But the Reckoner has more luck as it finds its way into Bike Rush's expansion, but a nice clutch engineer save helps him recover the refinery. And Bike Rush is quick to counterattack, but he meets Scorpion tanks with his Pitbull army, so he quickly transitions to Predator tanks, forcing back Nashington, but he's quickly hit with a one-click and loses a majority of his tanks in that deadly tip vein. But he's still got time to recover as Nashington pushes forward with a Purify Scorpion tank infantry attack, but Bike Rush manages to crush it, scoring himself some Purify husks in the process. And he's even got enough left to turn around and counterattack Nashington, but those obelisks are too hard to break as Nashington scores another one up with a nicely placed flame tank, taking out several buildings. 
Spike Rush attempts to steady and he reclaims more Purify Hus as he goes for the skies with his Orca attack and moves forward on the backside of Nashington's base trying to find a way in. And Nashington's response in the form of a Redeemer finds nothing but a Shockwave Artillery with a double punch of an Orbital Strike as Bike Rush quickly closes in for a nice easy disposal of the epic unit taking it down with its quad rail mile. And Bike Rush has got plenty of force in the counter attack as he takes out all of Nashington's tech and his power. But Nashington sneaks his way in with a sneaky purifier as he takes down several of Bike Rush's structures. However, he uses a distraction to quickly take out Bike Rush's very expensive Marv and turns around into the counter attack as Purifier versus Purifier. And the fight becomes increasingly desperate as Bike Rush finds himself under siege from both directions and coming in with the EMP buggies and tip core bikes attempting to destroy all of Bike Rush's army as both sides struggle to put together any kind of force possible, expending units faster than they can make them. But Bike Rush has got enough left in the tank for one final attack as the flame purifier fires cripple Nashington and both sides sell up all their structures unable to recover as Nashington goes in for his final attack with his last remaining units but he can't quite destroy Bike Rush's buildings faster as he loses his final power plant and pays the ultimate price unable to level Bike Rush's remaining structures. And of course the top 10 wouldn't be complete unless we saw this guy Technique the legend himself playing his black hand against everyone's favourite nemesis Bike Rush owns on Small Town USA. And we're once again treated to another flame tank rush and on this level it's going to be just as deadly and Tech doesn't see it coming till it reaches his base as he loses his war factory to the bikes and the flame tank as it rips down his production structures. Harvesters are the next on bikes list as he quickly snipes down several of Tech's harvesters as he desperately tries to hold on. But Bike can't crack him and goes back for another MCV and fast takes his way to tier 4. Meanwhile, Tech goes for a nice expansion in the southeast, but he's quickly hit with those tier 4 support powers and loses his entire army as well as his harvesters, and then the double punch is continued with a catalyst missile. Technique is tired of the cheap shots from Bike Rush as he pushes forward with his Scorp Tank army, forcing Bike Rush to engage, and he has the lesser forces. Technique crushing his way through while Bike Rush's Redeemer rushes into Technique's base, leveling the expansion as he quickly comes up against Technique's mass army. But there's simply no support for the Redeemer as Technique quickly surrounds and destroys it and then follows up with a deadly counter attack, beating back an all in flame rush into fast one quicks into a Redeemer run in and does it all without anything but a bunch of infantry and a couple of Scorpion tanks showing that he is the greatest Kane's Wrath player of all time once again in an incredible intense yet short game. We're down to the best three replays of 2012 here and we'll hit it off on Tournament Rift with Lion Cub playing as the Black Hand against Masterly playing as the Traveller 59. Lion Cub uses his superior infantry to grab the bottom spikes and then follows that up with a dual war factory bike attack. But Master Leaf is too tough to crack and Lion Cub can't find a hole in his defences, losing all of his bikes and allowing Master Leaf to tech up to tier 2 and then tier 3 and the mechs are out on the field in force, hitting Lion Cub's middle expansion. But he shakes off the heavy hitter units and manages to follow it up with a nice attack on Master Leaf's main base, bringing in his infantry army as well as his scorpion tank. But the Prodigy Hex combo quickly ends that, forcing Lion Cub to retreat. And then a failed attack on Master Leaf's drone platform leaves Lion Cub in serious trouble as the epic units engage in the centre of the map. And while the Hexapod teleports away, there's no escape for the Redeemer. Lion Cub quickly resorts to fast attack hit and run with his teched up units and then brings in his purifiers to finish off the base. Meanwhile, Master Leaf finds it slow going in the centre with all the imp from Lion Cub as the purifiers rip through his remaining structures, leaving him with almost no base remaining at all. And Lion Cub's determined to waste away the base as quickly as possible, destroying all the economy for Master Leaf and following up with a nice tin vapor bomb pouring salt on the wound. And things are looking even better for Lion Cub as he continues to land his Emp attacks on the Hexapod. But it doesn't stop Master Leaf from destroying the Redeemer once again, and with a heroic tripod, things are looking bad for Lion Cub. However, Master Leaf has little base remaining and he's forced to bring his drone ship along for the ride, only to find a heroic flame tank in his base there, preventing him from recovering. And Master Leaf is once again on the move with his now heroic Hexapod, forcing Lion Cub out of the center of the field as he retreats back to make his final stand. But he doesn't hang around waiting for defeat and pushes out once more, destroying the economy of Master Leaf before he can recover. And the final epic engagement opens up as all the Emp shots fail to hit their targets and it's a demoralizing move for Lion Cub as he quickly tries to encircle and destroy the last remaining forces of Master Leaf and somehow he overcomes the impossible and takes out the heroic units and comes through for an amazing victory. Okay, now get ready for replay number two on the list, which sees Bike Rush Owns playing as the GDI faction against Spectre playing as the Nod faction on Tournament Dust Bowl. And it's flame tank time once again as Bike Rush spots one of those deadly units coming out of the war factory, but he cuts it off before it gets to his base and quickly follows up with a counter attack, sniping down several harvesters. But Spectre's not going to be outdone and he returns the favour just as quickly. The first major engagement of the fight then opens up as Spectre rolls through with his superior Scorp tank army, but he can't push all the way through with the APCs focusing once he reaches the base. 
space. And soon Spec realizes he can't engage that superior force. So he hits up the double flame tank around the back, but Bike Rush is all over it, shutting it down. And Bike puts on the pain, rolling through with the major army, destroying Spectre's tech and forcing him to engage. And he even has time for pitfall or harassment down south. But Spectre gets tired of being pushed around, so he rolls in with his Avatar and Redeemer army, but he meets nothing but AP ammo, APCs and Orcas, which push back the Redeemer. And while it escapes under a stealth field, the Avatars aren't so lucky, getting picked off by the Orca forces and following through, destroying the Redeemer before it can get out of range. As Spectre finds his own Avatars being used against him as more of his base is leveled, and the Orcas begin to pour on the pain, putting Spectre in a desperate position, so he has to transition out to a mass infantry army, which proves quite effective with all those garrisons around, and he follows through with his Redeemer as well, punishing Bycrush's enemies. Air Force, and although he holds off, he can't quite finish off the Redeemer. This allows Spectre to regroup and attack once again in the south, he's causing some serious problems for Bike Rush. And instead of trying to recover, Bike Rush pulls a surprise move as he moves his MCV down the gun, only to lose it to the Flame Redeemer, but now the Marv's in on the action and Spectre's in all sorts of trouble as he whiffs the Emp attack. Both sides have almost no structures and only their epic units to rely on with just scattered forces backing them up. And Spectre can only watch as his MCV falls to the superior firepower of the Marv, and despite being one shot away from destroying the Marv, he loses his Redeemer and he loses his remaining structures as Bike Rush comes through for an amazing victory with only a scrap of health left on the Mar for a nice win. So here it is, the game you've been waiting for, the number one replay of the year as decided by the Kane's Wrath community. It is one awesome match. Featuring two of the best names and biggest players of the Kane's Wrath community, we have Kane's Wrath's most popular player, Unleashed UA, playing as the Traveler 59 Force against the powerhouse, the beast himself, Eclipse, playing also as the Traveler 59. And Eclipse gets things going with a crazy fast tech while Unleashed takes all the spikes on the map. And he knows exactly what Eclipse is up to, and he quickly uses cultists to take those mecha beads and use them back on Eclipse's forces. He then continues to herd around the rest of the mechas with his cultist forces, and there's no way in for Eclipse as he meets Tripod and Storm Column defenses. And to make matters worse, Eclipse loses his tech center to a sneaky prodigy, although he does manage to clean it up. Unleashed Tripod Cultist Force seems too much for Eclipse, pushing him back through the center of the map. So Eclipse tries it for himself, but it proves unsuccessful as the tripods focus down all the forces and once again the mechas are getting torn up on storm columns. Unleashed solidifies his position in the center with a massive base, but that doesn't stop Eclipse from rolling in with his own forces putting pressure on the base as the mind control antics begin but devastator warships and tripods push back Eclipse's main army and a nice EMP tripod shuts down the hexapod but Eclipse quickly grabs it for himself. Unleashed tries for a counterattack but has to phase away while his devastator warships find an entrance and manage to level several buildings in the process before they finally go down to the storm right at the Defend. Unfortunately though, Unleashed can't escape with his Hex. However, he does score Eclipse's drone platform, but a waiting engineer quickly claims it straight back for Eclipse, as neither side can break through each other's defenses, with the Storm Columns proving too powerful for even those Storm Riders. And bring forth the Prodigy Wars as both sides fight over the Lone Tripod as the area mind controls go down, followed by the Cultists, followed by the Phase, followed by the mind control once more, and Storm Riders from Unleashed this time back up his defense of the middle field, and a collateral husk kill prevents Unleashed from gaining the Tripod just in the nick of time. This allows Eclipse's Hexapod to escape, so Unleashed follows suit and the Prodigies are once again at each other's throats. And since neither Prodigy can directly impact one another, they both fight over the remaining units on the field in an epic tug of war. But Unleashed soon tires of these antics and goes straight for a super weapon, but do you think Eclipse is going to let that stand? No, here comes the Prodigy and it snares the drone platform, allowing Eclipse to place down his signal transmitter and that can only mean one thing, it's mothership time! Unleashed can't prevent the firing of the catalyst cannon and he's forced to sell up the super weapon. And with hardly any structures left, it's looking pretty grim for Unleashed as Eclipse makes his final assault on the base with his now heroic Hexapod. And despite an epic last stand from Unleashed, he's unable to defeat the Hexapod and its surrounding forces and Eclipse comes through for an amazing victory, his only feature in the top 10 and he came through for a nice victory there. We all saw him dominate last year, six of the top 10, only made one appearance this year, but what an appearance, what a great game by both players. Well there you have it, that's the top 10 games of the year for 2012 as decided by the Kane's Wrath community. Don't forget to stick around and stay on after the end credits here as I've got some behind the scenes footage for you as well as pictures, screenshots and how I made the video. Stay tuned for that, you're not going to want to miss it. Anyway, I'm Green Zero. I really hope you liked this special video presentation for Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath. Bring on the year of 2013 and hopefully a new Command & Conquer game. Stay tuned to my channel, subscribe and like if you enjoy the content. I'm Green Zero and I'll see you all next time.
as Black Rush rolls into the black, black, black Rush, black and blah. As Durr rolls in his Redeemer unsupported. Her, You're a Durr! And Bike Rush is all like, I got one clicks and techniques all like, they won't save you, bruh! As Master Chief quickly rolls in his drone platform for support as he sieges the middle expansion. I called him Master Chief again, damn it! As Onion Leash reaches. As, as, the Onion Leash. Onion. As Nashington rolls through Monster Father. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could watch this all day. And Daggy Man's all like Behemoth Ho! Is that what I say when I see your mother coming? As Kim Osabi closes in for the kill, taking out the enemy map despite the nice effect from the sniper teams behind there. Durr, durr. Her, durr. Her, durr. And I mean, that's how we found out that Technic is afraid of ducks. And the pressure's on early from Bike Rush, as Spectre struggles to harvest any of the spice that is disposed. Spice? What the hell? As Bike Rush gets pounded hard by the enemy map. Oh, that is not going in there as Kim is going to have a field day. And some people might say, well, you did edit the top 10 list a little bit. It wasn't totally on wubs. Well, essentially, I did edit it because 2v2s aren't allowed and the rest were bought and paid for. I can't defend the gameplay in some of those replays. So I fixed it. And Technique slams Bike Rush into the ground with a thundering rage and hitting with everything he's got. The power of a thousand suns collide as Bike Rush is blasted into oblivion. As Master Leaf loses both of his heroic units in the process. Oh yeah, take it Master Leaf. Yeah, you like that, don't you? <laughs> that wasn't just a win for Lion Cub, that was a win for all of Kane's Wrath. As Master Leaf is desperate to hold off the Scorpion tank army from Lion as he pushes in to crush the hub. Lion Frick! Lion Cub. As Dackle attempts to defend out his base with the Storm Riders overhead that are pounding the crap out of him. Oh, this is not pre-scripted and it doesn't work very well. 